is up my ninjas I'm striding to come back with another review this time we're looking at the Motu Classics Queen Grayskull aka Vina Grayskull um, or the sorceress as many people will come to know her um, this is a figure that you guys know I was looking for for a while I managed to find her at a really good price I was actually impressed that you know someone was actually selling her for under the hundred dollars that you saw uh, that I, I had in my other video that she was going for on eBay. Um, this is a good figure, but you know, Mattel just never seems, rarely seems to be 100% on the ball. But I'm going to start with all the positives and then we'll go to the negatives. This is a beautiful figure. This design is a beautiful design. So getting this in figure form is just freaking awesome. Uh, the paint job is immaculate. I don't have any slop when it comes to the overall paint. Now, uh, I do have some problems when it comes to areas that were tampoed or, you know, decoed on, and I will get to that. Um, for those of you who don't know who Queen Grayskull is, she's King Grayskull's wife. There was a flashback sequence in the uh, 2003, 2004 series, and they actually got to show you King and Queen Grayskull. Now, uh, sculpted paint-wise, you already know she has the aesthetic that the Motu Classics figures have, except she's bar or pulling from the uh, 2000, you know, three 2004 series and that revamped style. Right off the bat, you notice that she's about the same height as King Grayskull, and I think she should be a lot shorter, or he should be a lot taller. You know, a lot bigger because in the show he was ginormous. Now, I mean, I only need a few inches, you know, like this. That would give us the, you know, the better difference between them, you know, height and scale wise, uh, or I'm sorry, height wise and size wise. But I mean, they still look really good together. <clears throat> you see, I have my custom King Gray skull wearing the classic human gear. You know. Um, but yeah, they, they look pretty nice together, even though you're bought, you see two different aesthetics, you know what I mean? Uh, one is more Egyptian themed, the other one is more uh, barbarian, Norse style themed, you know? But uh, the staff, beautiful staff, it looks like the staff of Horus um, from Egyptian mythology. Or a take on the staff of Horus. It's molded in one single color. And then it's got just a red dot and I think eyes painted on it. The figure itself, like I said earlier, the paint job is pretty immaculate. It's nice and clean, all the lines are really well done, the earrings, eyebrows, etc, etc. Uh, the little jewels that show up on the belt and everything else, those are really well done. But, this brings me to my problem and my nitpick. I have two of them. But we're going to talk about the first one. It's those eyes. There, it's like she's got one lazy eye, and I don't understand why that's such a common problem I've heard with this figure. Anyway, like I said though, the paint on the belt is really well done as far as the uh, little red jewel. Um, it does look like there's kind of a gloss paint over parts of the edges of the armor. Um, the But I think the whole uh, belt, side armor, tunic loincloth thing. I think it's all molded in uh, blue or teal and then painted over. But it works. Somehow the colors playing with each other work really well. Uh, the uh, armor on her, you know, her lower legs, her knees, and her uh, feet. It's really well. It's really well done. I don't really have any, any gripes altogether. It just looks like a much more immaculate figure than it really is. I mean, she's deceptively simple. The sculpt work all over is really well done. I love all the wings, you know, all the birds and wings stuff that's going on motif-wise. The uh, feathers are really well done in so many places. I mean, just look at that. And you already know they're really good at this when you look at the uh, DCUC Hawkman and Hawkgirl figures. Uh, but, uh, yeah, overall, she just does not disappoint. And I know some people talk about your figure looking good on the shelf versus you looking up close on the figure, but I think she just looks good overall. This is it as far as accessories. It's the wings, 
her uh, scarf and her shield. That's it. Nothing else. No extra piece that goes to some other character, which they should have done. Like a possible sword. Nothing. So it's those pieces and the figure. That's it. And, you know, as I said before, you already know that everything looks the part. Everything is well done visually. The thing is, how well does everything work with, you know, the other parts of the whole? And I think all the parts work well. At first I thought the wings were, you know, two of the same wing, but they're pretty much, you know, a left and a right wing. They fit in properly. They move properly. The installation is really simple. The peg, uh, it's a kind of a little bit of a complex peg, but the peg fits right into those two holes on her back with no issues. Um, once again, looking at the detail on this, uh, these wings, it's nice. It's nice. They didn't really uh, skimp, you know? I mean, a wash probably would have been nice, you know, or a, qu a, a light airbrushing over it to give the wings some variation in color because, you know, Wings typically aren't one color all the way through. There's usually a little bit of something else, but uh, it looks good. And anyway, like I said earlier, complex peg. It's not that really that complex, but it's a peg system. The pegs fit perfectly into the holes on her back. Uh, the holes on her back have a little bit of rubber in them, and uh, it helps, you know, receive the peg with no problem. And then it conforms to the peg shape. The scarf. The scarf essentially is just one piece of plastic that was molded to look like a sculpt, I mean sculpted, I'm sorry, to look like a scarf. And uh, you just put that around her waist and on top of her forearms and let her kind of hold it that way. And uh, it works. The, the one thing I'll say though is it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit harder of a plastic than I was expecting. So it doesn't drape the way it probably should or could look, or could drape. Because, you know, if it had some weight on just the tips, it would hang down. It always looks like it's in flight, like there's a lot of energy around her. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you want and, and the space that you have to display her. The staff, like I told you before, really nicely done thing. It's one piece. So the, the portion with the bird at the very top does not swivel around or anything like that. The wings don't move, none of that shit. It's just a very simple, single cast and that's it uh i thought there was paint on the uh eyes but instead it's only on the little red jewel which is a reoccurring theme throughout this design is that there's always an accent of red somewhere um one side is really smooth and clean and you know very simple uh, uh you know lack of paint it's just, you know, the, the, the cast, the other side, same deal, red dot painted, or red jewel painted, and then China on the other side. That's really it. So, you know, she's really simple, but the details work together for a kind of a sublime look. Okay, so now we're going to work on her articulation, and it's really simple. Probably going to voice this over again, but we'll start at the top. Mass, it's MO2 stuff, so you know, ball jointed head, so she moves up that much. This back piece back here gets in the way, it hits the wings. If you put the wings down, you get an, a little bit up. She can look down a whole lot, she can tilt to the side. Very nice, no problem looking left and right, even with this back piece. Arms up, down, out. They actually can go up higher than that, which is dope. Swivel, so a bicep joint right there, elbow bends. Now on mine, this elbow is backwards. So I technically have two of the same, uh, you know, the right side or left side uh, hand. So it technically bends this much, but not on this side. That's as far as it goes. You can see it's backwards that's the side that should be up here. Anyway, you got a swivel at the wrist, a little bit of movement being impeded by the cuff, which is awesome still, looks good. Um, you've got a swivel at the waist, which is beautiful. Legs go up this far, the loincloth piece stops it. 
they go out that much. They can go further, but once again, this stops a lot of it. Um, she can bend at the knee, point at the toe, come up that much. No real pivot. It's in there, but it's not very uh, active. It's just a slight pivot. And that is, oh, and there's a thigh swivel in there. And that is the Queen Grace Gulls articulation. She's still a beautiful figure, and I love the Angelina Jolie style face, man. She's hot, man. It's dope. And of course, it's time for the bottom line. Honestly, I think that if you even remotely enjoyed any of the Motu 2000XX stuff or MYP, whatever you call it, you will enjoy this figure. Because it was a good, uh, they focused on a good part of the story that we didn't know about, you know, it made sense of a lot of things that, you know, the comics and the, 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 well, the original comics and such left to our imaginations. You know, and it's nice to know what actually happened, you know, so you have some place to start. It, it just tends to make more sense, you know, and it's nice to have characters from that period represented in figure form so that your collection actually feels complete from the historical aspects from back in the day to the present time, which is what, you know, the majority of us would be focusing on if we're playing around with these figures or if you're making setups to represent things that happen in that world. Or say you just want the old school Eternia stuff, you know, the pre uh, Adam of Grayskull stuff, then you can easily just find all these characters from back in the day. What is it, the early days of pre Eternia or some shit like that? You can find those characters and you can make up your own little thing. For me, I, I pick and choose, but the majority is based on that lore. I love the way that series went by. That's my He Man because I hated how non violent and how. Uh, questionable some of the design uh, uh, choices and situational choices were in the original He-Man series from uh, Filmation. Uh, plus, I love this sword. I know so many people have mixed feelings about it, but I love it. It just looks like something more than a big ass, agile barbarian. You know, it's badass. It looks like a power sword. You know? So, she is captured in like or rendered, I should say, in like really great detail. And since they didn't make a modern, you know, MYP version of the Sorceress as she appeared in the 2000XX series, it's kind of, excuse me, it's kind of dope to have this version to fill in that spot. So, you know, to me, this is a win. Hopefully you'll be able to find one that doesn't have jacked up eyes and messed up, you know, a messed up arm. Uh, but overall, I like this figure, and I think she's worth the time. So, you know, if you see her, get her, especially if you can get her for under 50 bucks, like I did. So, that has been my look at the uh, Motu Classics Queen Grayskull. As always, this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. I think this figure is totally worth the time and the money. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not perfect. It is Mattel, but... I think you should get her, you won't be disappointed. So, that's it for me. You guys have been great. I got some good stuff coming up for you uh, very soon. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. You guys have been great. I will catch you on the next video. Peace outside.